Decades ago, just after I had turned 14, I was visiting a friend. It was in Butler, Pennsylvania, on a clear and a chilly Sunday afternoon. Suddenly, his brother burst in. We are at war, he said. They just bombed Pearl Harbor. Even as a young teenager, I had closely followed the war's development. My memory of that moment is sharp. It was one of great relief. We were finally in the war. Now we would stand up to the evil Nazis invading Europe and the Japanese militarists plundering China. Some jingoists proclaimed, well, we will defeat Japan in two weeks. But most knew that it would be a long and a hard fight. And after the losses at Pearl Harbor, that was all too clear. From my 14-year-old perspective, I secretly feared that the war would end too soon, before I was old enough to join up. And that was just what happened. While I was still 17, it was over. Nevertheless, after three semesters at Carnegie Tech, I did turn 18 and enlisted in the Army. They trained me in mapping and shipped me off to the Army of Occupation in Japan. I was stunned when I first saw it, the vast ruins that once had been the great city of Tokyo. Nothing, nothing had prepared me for such utter devastation that was wrought by massive waves of firebombing rained down by American bomber attacks. It was a transforming experience. In many ways, I grew up from it. Soon after, I was sent to the island of Okinawa, site of the last great battle of World War II. More than 200,000 people, soldiers and civilians, perished there. In the port of Naha, its capital, not a single building was left standing. The island was a moonscape, denuded of trees and vegetation, the smell of death still lingering. The War of Japan had ended with the detonation of atomic bombs on two other great cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Pictures of those cities reminded me of the wasteland of Tokyo and Naha. But there was one huge difference. It had taken multiple strikes by thousands of bombers and tens of thousands of high explosive bombs to lay waste to Tokyo. The same had been done to Hiroshima and then to Nagasaki with just one plane and just one bomb. Just one bomb. The unleashing of this colossal force indelibly shaped my life in ways that I have now come to see more clearly. It impressed on me that our world faces an enormous and an unprecedented danger a danger beyond the ruin of vast cities, a danger no less than the end of civilization. That was my first great lesson of the nuclear age. When it comes to weapons of war, our new and unimaginable capacity to inflict horror and ruin had changed everything. Everything.